Hey, everybody. Hello, Doug. Hello. I think I might have heard Clemens and Eric in there. Is it right? That's correct. Right. Me too. Yep. yep. All right. And Christian, are you there? Hey, Doug. Hello. Whoa, what did I just do? All right, Ray, are you there? Oh, no microphone yet. How are you guys doing? Doing all right. Actually, Ray is my coworker. He's uh, he wants to sit in for today too. Oh, okay, cool. It's uh, Ray with an E. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, give him the yeah. benefit out. <sighs> okay. Do, do, do. Hmm. Actually, it might be a really short call today. It should be nice, I'm sure. Last one of the year. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> do, do, do. Anybody have anything exciting planned for the vacation or just hanging out at home? That's my plan. Yeah. Mostly, mostly at home, maybe a few little trips, but otherwise nothing huge planned. Yeah. Yeah, we got lucky. Um, both my parents and my wife's parents both seem to take a similar approach where they'll pick like a different holiday. Like my mom used to always pick Thanksgiving as, you know, her holiday where she wants you know, everybody to show up. But they both seem to agree that uh, Christmas was, you know, that where you guys should spend time at home and just relax and stuff. And I'm so glad they both agree with that because it makes it so much easier, much, much more relaxing that way. Yeah, we, we live uh, within an easy 20 minutes drive from either house, so. Oh, so you can see both in one day. <laughs> yes, it's uh, the we have two Christmas holidays. Um, well, we have we have three days off, but we have uh, two Christmas holidays, and the one is for that family, and the other one is for that family. Ah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I can see them being close to you, being really nice and really questionable at times. <laughs> it's so far, it's been work. It has worked out well. That's good. That's good. Everybody's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, hello, Lucas. Lucas, are you there? All right, Fabio, are you there? Yep. <laughs> hello. That sounds like a Windows machine. Uh, da -da -da. Hello, Klaus. Hi, Doug. How's it going? Great. Good. Um, is that Matthias? M A T Z E W? <clears throat> yes, that's right. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, Ryan, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. And Tommy. Oh, hey, Lucas. Tommy, are you there? All right. Thank you, Tommy. Hey, Lucas, I can't. I, I apologize. I can't remember for sure if you've been on the call before or not. If you, if this is your first time on, if you want to be associated with a company, can you just drop your company name into the uh, chat, just like marketing attendance? Thank you. Oh, Red Hat. Okay. Do -do -do. All right, Mohammed, are you there? Yeah, yes, good morning. Good morning. 
And for those of you who are new to the call, we usually wait till about three after you get started, just give everybody a chance to join. Uh, Chen, are you there? Uh, yes. Okay. Want to do me a favor and just paste your last name into the chat, or you can actually edit the, the agenda doc if you want, and, and your company name, because I think this might be your first time on. Okay. Thank you. And let's see, I thought I saw someone else go flying by that was new. Oh, Erwin, are you there? Erwin? Hi, how are you doing? Hello. And what about Mike Hemlick? Mike, are you there? All right, what about Vile? Sorry, I'm here. I, I, I'm new to Zoom, so I didn't know how to unmute my microphone. <laughs> Not a problem. The double mute kills a lot of people. Yeah. Yep, I'm here. Hey, Vile, how's it going? Great, how are you? Pretty good. Good. And then there's this N-F-E-R-R-A-R-O. I'm not sure. Well, they don't have a microphone, so I can't ask them anyway. Okay. Did it do? All right, it's three after. Let's see if I got everybody. I think I got everybody. Yeah, okay, speak up if I missed you. Um, all right, so 17. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Maybe we can end this thing early. Um, nothing new on the AIs. I really need to actually find out from Austin if he wants to keep this one going. Um, relative to the other one, um, we, did, we did actually talk to the CNCF TOC about whether we want to start up a serverless SIG versus get incorporated into one of the other SIGs that's getting created or create a brand new one that's not called serverless, but maybe app platform or something like that. Um, and there really wasn't a, a consensus yet in the TOC. So I think Mark, Ken, and I still have sort of an AI to go back to work out with the TOC what we want to do going forward. I don't get the sense that this is an urgent thing. That's why we've kind of been letting it take a back seat to our discussions. But I just want to let you guys know that it is sort of still lingering out there and we will try to figure out what, the ha what we're going to do going forward or what the TOC wants us to do going forward. Um, but as of right now, nothing's really changed and it doesn't impact our day-to-day -day activities anyway, so it's not a big deal. All right, uh, community time. Is there anything from the community um, that people would like to bring up as a topic for discussion that's not on the agenda? Typically, this is for newcomers. All right, not hearing any. Uh, just want to mention, obviously, everybody knows about KubeCon EU coming up. The call for proposal is behind us. Um, however, I did notice just today that the Serverless Practitioner Summit uh, announcement page, or what you want to call it, was actually um, went online. And so they are planning on having one on March 30th, which I think is a, another day zero type of event kind of a thing for KubeCon. I don't believe the CFP for that is open, but I did want to mention this so you guys can start thinking about ideas if you do want to uh, submit a proposal for the Service Practitioner Summit. So just keep an eye out for that. As I notice the CFP comes online, I'll definitely let you guys know. Um, but obviously KubeCon itself is March 30th to April, 20, April 2nd if you want to start making plans. So I'll make sure everybody is aware of that. Um, all right, just a reminder, we did agree no calls next week, the week after that, or the week after that. So this is the last call for this week, and then we'll meet again, what, January 9th to be the next one. So just a quick reminder. All right, SDK call. I, I think we actually did have a call last week, but I don't remember anything too exciting happening there. If somebody was on the call who wants to speak up, feel free to now. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going. I don't think there's anything too exciting happened last week's call. Can anybody think of anything? All right, moving forward. Um, I don't see Kathy on, so there's no, and I don't see anybody from the workflow group on the call, I don't think, let's check. So I'm not sure there's anything to mention there relative to going on, anything going on with the workflow stuff. Um, actually, what, what I will do as an AI to myself is I'll try to ping somebody over there to get them to at least join the calls when they think something worthy of mentioning um, happens in the group that might be of attention to people. The one thing that I can think of, because I am kind of watching it um, out of the corner of my eye, is they are working on a governance doc to describe how you can get, uh, you know, committer rights and all that, or maintainer rights in that little subgroup. So if that is of interest to you, um, feel free to look at the PR that's opened up over there if you want to review that. Um, I haven't had a chance to take a look at it myself, but I suspect it's pretty, probably pretty similar to what most people would expect. Um, but anyway, take a look if you want to do that. All right, quick go through some issues here. Um, these two issues were there from last week. I think, um, thank you, Scott, even though I don't think he's on the call, for responding to both of those. Um, 
and I'm going to double back with the authors to see if we can close those two issues. Although the first one may lead to a, a, a syntactical wording change, nothing normative, I don't believe in the spec, but I'll work with the authors of those issues to see if anything needs to happen there. And just to keep the backlog moving along, um, Klaus, since you're on the call, yes, I was wondering if you've had any yeah. time to think about this one. I, from my perspective, it's it's closed by now. I mean, I opened it when we, I think, were even before the first uh, draft version of, of the spec or something. Um, so for me, it's solved, but I could, as I promised in this uh, discussion, uh, provide some example if okay. that's needed. Okay. Is that something you might be able to work on relatively soon? Or are you going to go on vacation? We should wait till next year, just trying to get a time frame kind of a thing. I can try to go and do it uh, before I go on vacation, I think. It's... Okay. Okay, that'd be great. Just just trying to clean up the backlog, so I'd appreciate mm -hmm. that. Yeah, sure. No, I mean, it's been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And so anybody anybody else who may have opened up an issue, be warned, at some point I will ping you to figure <laughs> out what you want to do with your issues, because you know, we got to get that backlog down. All right, cool. Um, let's see, I don't see Mark on the call, so I can't nag him about his. So, okay, we'll keep moving then. We have no open PRs, so that's good. I'll be discussed there. So, all right, on to the meat of the meeting itself. So. As a refresher, on last week's call, we talked about all the various options in terms of what to work on next. And there are lots of obvious, obviously we had lots of different topics that were brought up. Um, and we kind of narrowed it down to two that people thought were worthy of discussion or possible work items uh, or work streams at this point in time. Um, that's not to say that some of the other ones that people thought were important uh, should not be worked on at all. It's just more of a timing perspective because we seem to think we can only do one one bigger thing at a time and in fact i actually am hoping that for some of the items uh, there may be some background discussions going on in preparation for maybe working on it after whatever the next thing is um, so we can do a little bit of parallel work in terms of thinking but in terms of hardcore work we're probably going to have to serialize things was i think the general sense and what i think it came down to was these two uh discovering subscription apis which does also now include based upon last week's discussions um uh, uh, delivery mechanisms. I, I can't remember the exact phrase uh, who brought it up. There was something around the, the delivery of the events itself, which I think fits in nicely with subscription and, and API type stuff. And we did decide that if for some reason that one gets to be too big, almost like it should become its own thing, then we could look at splitting it out. But I think we, we agreed for right now, try to keep it under this one and see if we can uh, do it all at once. And then security was mentioned by Jim. Um, Although Jem, I don't believe can make the call today. I do, and I hope I'm not saying something I shouldn't, but in private chats with him, I was asking him if he could provide a little bit more detail in terms of what he was thinking there, just so you guys had a little more background in terms of what his thought process was, in terms of what end-to-end -end security would include, you know, what's in scope, what's out of scope. Um, unfortunately, he didn't actually give me a concrete answer for that, but I, what he did say, which I thought was interesting, was he's actually in favor of looking at subscription and discovery first. Uh, so while I, that wasn't, quote, an official vote from him in terms of which way he'd go, I'm going to interpret it as, in that way uh, for the purposes of us deciding. So I just want to throw that out there to help you guys as you th go through your thought process. Um, I think it's interesting that the person who proposed the end of insecurity also does believe that more thinking needs to happen about that before we actually choose to work on it. So I just thought that was interesting. Not that I'm trying to bias anybody or anything like that, of course. <laughs> Uh, Doug, this is Vladimir. I can yes, confirm. Vladimir. I talked to uh, Jem. He is not able to join us, but yes, um, he is, um, or we are on the opinion that we should um, a little bit postpone with the security because there is a, a large number of potentially rather complex issues. Yep. And uh, perhaps uh, engaging some people who are really focusing on, on depths of security will be appropriate at some point later. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for clarifying that. It's wonderful. You're welcome. All right, cool. Okay, so with that, um, even though the proposer of this uh, wants to do the other one, out of fairness, we did mention both as options. So let me open up the floor to people and see what people think. Um, is there, uh, let me actually let me rephrase that differently. Would, is there anybody who would like to speak now in favor of one or the other? 
Um, I think last on um, last week's call, we had quite a few people speaking in favor of description and discovery. I'm mean, sorry, subscription and discovery. Um, but is there anybody on the call who would like to speak to doing end-to-end -end security before we do something like discovery and subscription? Okay. okay. Let, if you allow, I'm not going to speak for it, but I'm speaking for sta staging these things because I think we need to go do, do both. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so we will need a some sort of, of registry um, API that we agree on um, that has the ability to store um, you know, a catalog of events and that has the ability to store schemas and it has the ability to store secrets of some sort. Um, and I think of the of the secret the secrets are the less important one. That's why I'm favoring discovery and subscription. Okay. Uh, but ideally, we'll have some something that is uniform for end to end security. It will be um, important to have a model where we can store um, secrets information of some sort. Uh, because we're doing, um, we need to be doing, you know, broadcast of, um, effective broadcast of datagrams, which means we can't organize session key, we can't negotiate session keys. So end-to-end -end security is going to be a fairly involved thing that requires distributing, storing, distributing key information. Um, and so we'll, that's something we'll have to tackle. I think we have to go and, and deal with, you know, what is, a re what is the, our registry model look like? What does our registry interface look like? And we'll probably also have to go and think about this for multiple protocols and not just HTTP. Um, and I think once we have that as a template and that once we've made that robust using something that's a little simpler, like the, the schema registry and or um, um, event registry, then we can go and, and, and move ahead and start thinking about how a key vault would look like. But ideally, the interface is not very different. Okay. So just yeah. No, sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you're done. Go ahead and finish. Um, and so I think the uh, um, uh, the discovery and subscription API that that model that we need to have there is um, somewhat a, a prerequisite to the end-to-end -end security story, if we want to have something that's consistent. Okay. And just for for clarity's sake, when you when you talk about the registry stuff, are you talking about the registry from or that that's sitting on top of an event producer so you can see what he's producing or are you thinking about some standalone registry someplace or do you actually see one solution be able to cover both um, I, so i think i believe there are there are three things that fall into the discovery and subscription bucket um, and that is um and discovery it, discovery is I can walk up to I can walk up to a um, publisher or a delegate of the publisher, mm -hmm. um, and I can ask which events shall be expected from a particular source, um, and then I can go and subscribe to them. But then once I go to uh, walk up to that catalog, that catalog should also give me a um, information about um, you know what is contained in that what is contained in that event. And that then almost necessity, necessitates a schema registry of some sort um, that you uh, can then also use to, for instance, drive the serialization of protobuf. Okay. So and I, I, I don't think it make I don't think it makes sense to have a catalog um, of events that are being published by a source without that catalog being able to refer to a schema registry. Right, but the, but that schema registry. Um can technically be part of that same uh, yes that same thing right yeah okay yeah it's it's i think i think of these things as three uh, interfaces that kind of are in, interdependent right um, but they might be in, implemented if we use the fancy fashion term as independent microservices right yep okay Is it, cool it, Hey, it's be like just curious when you think about the schema the registry are you thinking about an api proper or are you just thinking about the actual um uh format of the schema because in the cloud events we have the schema url it's a pointer right yeah. uh is that is there is there actually a proper api that is necessary or can we just utilize um a url um so 
Uh, so yes, so right now we're, we're happy to have just a URL, um, but I think you should be able to, so, so subscriptions is effectively the ability to go and, and, and ask for a, for a new subscription to be created, right? So that's already yep. an API. Yep. And if there's middleware, so if you're a publisher, but you're using some middleware, you probably want to go and, and define um, a, you want, you want to publish into that middleware what shape your events are. So which events you offer and what shape your events are. So yes, I believe that's an API. Okay, so it's not only a matter of get. You think that it's actually no. going to be uh, it's going to be read modified, right? Yeah. So there's there's a I think there is a lightweight, and and I don't think it's 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 a spectacular you know new invention. It's effectively a CRUD API, which is going to be for HTTP a very simple REST service, um, but the very simple REST service we have to go and agree on the shape of that very simple REST service, and the simpler we can make it, the better it is. Yeah, I understood. I was just trying to, uh, the, the, the only tricky bit then, now we have to deal with the, the auths and everything else. So I just wanted to understand yeah. if it's strictly necessary or if we might be able to go ahead and, and focus on read first. But anyways, uh, now we had, I, I'll, I'll take the conversation elsewhere. I just wanted yeah. to understand. I think the reads are also subject to auth in general, right? Because there are, there are schemas which are secret. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> As much as you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> okay. So, so I feel like there, there is something I have to say here, um, just as sort of like moderator of the call. Without saying whether I agree or disagree with anything Clemens said here, even though it would be a foolish to ever disagree with him, <laughs> I think it's important to say that everything that Clemens just said is him speaking for himself and or Microsoft. Okay? That is correct. Right. So... If, for example, we choose to work on discovery and subscription, discovery and subscription, the exact scope of that, the exact thing that what's in or out is TBD, right? We will decide what that is. The agreement here is not to say, yes, everything Cummins just said is what we're going to work on. Rather, it's we're agreeing, we're agreeing on that general direction. And then as the process goes along, we'll figure out exactly what's in or out of scope and whether it aligns with what Clemens just said or not is yet to be determined. But the entire point of that discussion was just to hear one person's point of view and that's and that's great but i just don't want anybody thinking that one person is setting the group the, the group's the direction and it's not it's the group is deciding on the overall direction and then we'll narrow down the scope or what's out of scope as we go along just wanted to clarify that all right all right anybody else want to speak up then in favor of of or talk about end-to-end -end security at all because the reason i'm asking it this way and i know it's a little bit of a leading question is because it seemed like most people on last week's call did want to say yes, discovery inscription was the choice, but I don't want to downplay end end security if somebody really wants to promote that one as the one as the way to go. Okay. In that case, is there any objection to the group deciding that yes, we are going to look at discovery slash event subscription API as the next big thing that we are going to work on? All right, so that is approved. We will work on that. Okay, so then the next steps. Um, I want to open this up. So a while ago, I put together this doc simply as a thought exercise for myself, just to see what I thought might be included as a starting point for mainly around the subscription API. I didn't. I don't think I really much include things around uh, discovery, and I definitely didn't include schema registry or any of that other stuff. How do people want to take the next steps here in terms of going forward? I suspect people will probably not have a whole lot of time before the beginning of the year. So obviously you can think about it over you know, the, the holidays coming up. But do we want to start with a clean sheet of paper? Do people think that this is enough of a starting point? We could start with this and then people just start editing it like crazy through Google Doc. And then once it settles down, we can move it over to Markdown and do PRs. Is there a preference people have in terms of how we go forward here? I'm, to be honest, even though I wrote this, I'm perfectly okay with starting with this fresh piece of paper if somebody wants to do that. I don't really care. I just want to know how you guys feel. Does anybody want to volunteer an opinion? Uh, uh, Scott, your hands up. Hey, I've read through that doc, and my only comment was, uh, if we're going to invent a new API, it needs to be declarative, and it probably should look like a Kubernetes API. <laughs> um, is that something you think we need to actually decide now, or 
I think that's a like that should be a uh, like a tenant that we work with. Um, so wire protocol is something that I care about first and then an implementation on top of the on top of uh, whatever the wire protocol is. So I, I, what, what's a declarative API sounds like you're writing code, which is great, but we also need to need to um, worry about how the pieces talk to each other across the network. Yes and no. Like <laughs> declarative APIs changes how you talk over the wire. It so assumes ask, certain shapes in that that payload. So let me so ask if you, you start this. there, then it, it helps you frame the rest of it. So, so Scott, let me ask you this. I I do agree with you that most of what I put down here kind of had an RPC mechanism in mind. I, I do agree with that. And I probably should not have done it that way. However, um, there are I, it would not be very difficult for me to, to twiddle this so that instead of saying, okay, here are the inputs and here are the outputs, I could twiddle it to say, these are the things that are required to set it up. And these are the things that the person who did the setup will need in order to actually use the next step in the process. And whether you get that from a reply versus from looking at the status section of a resource because it's a declarative model, I can make it so that it's a little more abstract so we don't necessarily have to choose at this point in time the exact wire protocol but, fo but focus first on what is the data that's necessary from a initialization perspective versus usage perspective. Would yeah, that help? We could also possibly, you know, just like cloud events, we could have a binding to heritage applications versus declarative applications. That's kind of where I was going to go with this. Yes. Yeah. And then at, I, at some point though, I do think we're probably going to have to have a discussion and say, which one do we promote so that we have interoperability? Because that's obviously a key point in all this, right? Because if half the world uses RPC and half the world uses declarative, we may not have helped the community, right? It, but I'm, uh, but I'm, probably but, have, uh, probably have to learn learn what the what the what declarative means in in that particular corner of the world. Yeah, but my point, but, I, I, but my bigger point is, I'm not sure we have to decide that today. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so, so Scott, if we decide to head in the direction of using this doc as a starting point, I will take the action item to try to twiddle this around to not assume one particular wire protocol. Is that fair? Yep, thank you. Okay. So, and I'll probably, I'll, so, so I'll probably bring a, um, um, I'll probably bring a protocol, a protocol level suggestion because the, the um, you know, how that looks, how that looks up at the programming model layer doesn't worry me as much as it does um, across system interoperability because this this should work with Kubernetes, but that's not that's not everything that exists in the world. That's and neither is the whole you know Go CNCF infrastructure. I want uh, this this should be as as much as cloud events has as fairly large reach. Um, I think these APIs should also have as as much reach. Okay, um, Ryan, your hands up. Oh, I uh, forgot to lower it, but yeah, I, I'll just echo that. Um, I, I would much prefer to focus on the optic model first and the semantics of that, um, and then keep that separate from how it's actually deployed and implemented. Uh, just personally coming from the Twilio world. Yep. I didn't think of that. Okay, that's fine. I agree. Okay. Uh, Mohammed, your hands up. Yeah, my only comment would be that I think traditionally, if you look at this, I would have assumed there'd be three separate APIs, like one for just generic discovery, one for like, and then the other two for PubSub. Um, I would, I guess my gut would be, we should spend more time defining the discovery piece first. And then once we go from there, we can actually then define the PubSub model. I think I read the doc actually, it was really, it was awesome. I didn't notice it, it was a dive very deep into the subscription. Uh, but it'd be cool to, to hash out what discovery means, and then from there we can talk about pubs. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, I tend to agree with that. In, and in fairness, or in, in full disclosure, I, I did write it mainly from script subscription because that's where the discussions were at the time that I started writing it, and that's why the discovery stuff is a little bit light. I that was relatively new for in, in my thought process. But yeah. Okay. So. 
Yeah, but it's all equally important. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, how do people want to proceed? Blank sheet of paper. Anybody else have a proposal? Use that rough outline that I put together. How do people want to start? Ville. I think we should. I, I mean, I know I. I think that's the same doc that I have already made comments. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks like other people have as well. I would prefer that unless there's a very strong reason to start from blank sheet, um, we use that as a starting point. And I prefer doing it using Google Docs over over markup. Okay. All right. Um, anybody else disagree or have a concern hey, in that direction? Okay. So let me, let me make it a little more formal. Is there any objection then to starting with that doc, which is under that rough idea link that's in the meeting notes? And we'll obviously keep it as a Google doc for now because that's easier to do quick edits going back and forth. And then <coughs> once we feel like the doc is starting to settle down, then we could switch over to something like Markdown in the GitHub repo and do PRs and issues like we did for cloud events. Does that sound fair? Okay. In that case, um, in turn, I, uh, huh. is there anything else worth discussing then on this call? Because that's technically into the agenda. Are there, do you guys want to start having more discussions around the document itself? Would you rather wait and start making comments into the doc over the next couple of weeks? Um, it's up to you guys. I mean, we can end the call early. We can have discussions now about from a technical perspective. It, it's completely up to you guys. We have half an hour to, to, to do stuff if you really want to. I, I need to, I think I need to go and read, read through the, the document as it is. But I think from, a, from an approach perspective, um, I mean, we, we started with cloud, uh, with cloud events as, a, as an abstraction and then made that more concrete towards the wire part. Um, and so that seems to be the approach that everybody's favoring. And so I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, the um, but I am I am a little worried about the or or I'm I'm worried about making sure that the the you know there are the, the API definitions whatever they are map into um, wire interactions that can be implemented by the publishers or by generic middleware um, in a way that you can go and realize those. So if you have a declarative API. Um, you have a, a configuration declaration that says I need to go and subscribe to these three things. Then there's will presumably be an, be an engine that does that realizes those, but the engine needs to go and talk to external parties. And so that API that that engine uses to talk to external parties, um, I think that's the more difficult piece than the. Or, or the the piece that really needs to be harmonized, rather than the the piece that really says you know here's how to tie up a subscription into a particular infrastructure, because that's a matter of taste and and whatever your infrastructure is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to me, I think I, I I kind of focus on the very beginning of what you said there, which was you need time to go look at that doc. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I agree with everything else you said there too, but I think just my gut reaction based upon how I've seen this group work in the past, um, I think most people have probably not really looked at the doc very much, even though it's, it's been out there for, I think, at least a week or so. Um, so I would like to suggest that we don't go into a deep dive discussion here about anything, but rather give people the opportunity to look at it over the next couple of weeks, and then when we come back um, what is it, January 9th, um, then start having a discussion based upon the comments people left in the doc. Does that sound fair to people? Yeah. All right, Clemens, I heard Clemens. Anybody else want to voice an opinion, yes or no? Sounds great. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. The only thing I would suggest in terms of adding the doc, and if people disagree with this, that's fine. But obviously, small little typographical things or wording changes, you know, that's fine. You make those in line and stuff and 
and I'll probably accept them all, no big deal. Um, but if there's, a, there's a, if there's a section of the doc where there's like two different ideas at play, rather than having a very long discussion and a comment about a particular idea, if possible, try to put the text you'd like to see into the doc itself. Even if it just means that in particular sections, we have three or four different versions of what people want to see. That way people have very concrete uh, uh, text to review of what your idea is, and it's not just some abstract thing in a comment. I find it much easier for people to say, ah, I see what you mean, and I like it, or, oh, I don't like that now that I've actually seen what, what that means realized, and they, then they could say no. But I think it's a lot easier if you just put your actual text in there, and that way people can compare and contrast the various ideas in a more concrete form rather than just an abstract idea in a comment. So don't feel like you have to build necessarily upon what's already in there and keep that that basic idea, you can have a completely radical new idea, just put it after the previous one so people can compare and contrast. Just put like a line, you know, dash lines between them so people can know that you're trying to replace the previous section or something like that. Does that make sense to people? Okay, because I, I don't want people to assume that anything in there has to stay. If the entire thing could be tossed out over time, I have no problem with that whatsoever. This was just a brainstorming exercise for myself to, to get a little more concreteness in my mind in terms of what I thought people were thinking. Okay. All right. With that, any other topics you want to bring up at all, either about next steps or just in general? Only holiday wishes. Only holiday wishes. Yes. Happy holidays, everybody. But of course, we, we can't leave without me doing the final roll call because I know how much Scott loves that. So, Doug M, are you still there? Doug? How about this person, N-F-E-R-R-A-R-O. I'm here, I'm Nicola Ferrero from Red Hat. Okay, uh, can you do a favor? Put your name into the chat or into the agenda doc, just so I can get the right spelling and stuff, because I am horrible when it comes to spelling people's names. Okay. Okay, sure. did I miss anybody? And I heard Doug, I saw you coming off of mute, so you're there, right? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent, yep. cool. All right, did I miss anybody for the agenda or the attendance list? All right, cool. In that case, I believe we are done. 25 minutes to spare. And as Clemens said, happy holidays, everybody. And we'll talk again on January 9th. All right. All right. Happy yeah. holidays. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Be safe. Happy Bye. holidays. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.